So in this video, we're going to finish exploring some evidence for evolution by talking about Darwin's boldest idea yet. He, pro he proposed that uh, maybe all modern species came or descended in evolutionary history from a common ancestor. That maybe we all have something in common, and the reason why we're different today is that we just fashioned different adaptations, maybe through living in different environments, over a really long period of time. Now that's something that doesn't seem obvious at all on the face of it. Uh, it doesn't seem like I would have much in common with something like an oak tree, for example. It does photosynthesis, I don't. I have all kinds of, of, of anatomical features inside me, like a beating heart and a blood system that plants don't have. So how could you say that I have anything in common with that? So as it turns out, there's still a ton of evidence to support that idea, but we've got to look deeper. And so really what Darwin said uh, in his basic proposals is that he, he imagined kind of this tree of life, uh, maybe a common root to the tree. And then again, as different groups of organisms fashioned different adaptations, maybe they started to branch off and diverge from each other. Um, and so I've kind of created a, a similar diagram over here. Um, I'm asking you to imagine uh, billions of years of evolutionary history proceeding. Maybe we all have a common ancestry at the root, and then we started to branch off and diverge. So a very um, interesting um, idea. Uh, as it turns out, this is something that biologists have taken seriously. So uh, if you wanted to visit this particular website, this kind of represents um, a compilation of our best guess at how that tree might be constructed. Um, uh, something we will certainly look at again in our second unit. So, um, all we're trying to do in this video is just support the basic idea itself. And really, I want to make maybe two broad claims that uh, the closer, the more closely related certain lineages are, certain groups are, they should share more in common. Because maybe this kind of represents everything that they shared in common through their history until they started to go their separate ways here. So those two groups here at the top ought to have more in common than say this group and this group way over here um, that diverged much more distantly in history. And so there ought to be a lot of groups that we have quite a bit in common with as humans. And then um, the other thing we want to support is just this idea that there ought to still be some universal things we have in common um, across all modern species. And believe it or not, we can find evidence for those, but we've got to go deeper into the cells that make us up. As it turns out, a lot of the things we've been discussing this entire course uh, could support this idea. So um, before I move on, let me make sure I uh, clearly define this term homology. Um, you see the root word homo there that means the same. And so what a homology really represents is anything that shows the same ancestry of um, different living groups. Um, so they have a true um, evolutionary uh, um, uh, ancestor back in, in time that they may be shared until they um, went their own way in evolutionary history. And so when we discuss homologies, um, I want you to be able to identify two things for me. I want you to be able to tell me which group um, shares that homology. So are you making a claim that this is just something that certain groups uh, share? And if so, which groups? Or is it everybody? And what is that similarity? Try to be very clear about what they share. And so let's go through some examples here. And again, we're going to encourage you to explore many more examples with class time. So uh, something that is kind of a more recent homology, we do actually as humans share some similarities in anatomical structure with other land vertebrates or um, uh, general groups of animals that are a little bit more closely related to us in history. So again, anatomy is just sort of um, what we're made of and what we look like. And as it turns out, a lot of our bone structures in our limbs, so for us, our arms and legs, are very similarly set up in lots of different groups like amphibians, reptiles, birds, other mammals. Um, we all have a basic body plan to kind of um, use our limbs to hold our bodies off the ground on land. Um, and that would be uh, what we sometimes refer to, I'm going to borrow from Neil Shubin here, the one bone, two bone, lots of bones body plan. 
So you kind of have one giant bone um, in, the, in, in your arms and legs closer to your trunk, followed by two bones, and then lots of bones in your hands or feet. And so do all of those other organisms. Now granted, they've kind of fashioned them differently to support what they do. If you imagine the wings of a bat, for example, there are still bones in those wings, but just very, very, very thin to support flight. So lots of different variations from there, but the similar overall bone body plan suggests that we just diverged from a common ancestor a long time ago. So something that, um, to, to finish this video, to give a few examples of kind of more fundamental homology, let's talk about some things that all living things have in common, like me and that oak tree. Um, so something that we all share is our DNA information system. We all have this master code DNA inside of our cells whose sequence of nitrogen bases can be copied by RNA, and then RNA's sequence of nitrogen bases teaches the ribosomes how to build our proteins out of amino acids. We've already done this in our course. We've used a translation table like this, which tells us how groups of three RNA letters code for particular amino acids. But as it turns out, that same translation table works in all living organisms. That's why I can take DNA code out of a human cell and put it into a bacterium, like maybe the gene for insulin, for example, and I can still have that bacterium make insulin protein for me. So um, a shocking amount of similarity um, that's shared across all species. Another great example would be fundamentally similar processes that occur inside cells, maybe certain processes that all living cells have to do. For example, all living cells are gonna to have to do some kind of cellular respiration to power themselves to make their ATP. And so uh, we kind of discussed this back in the fall semester, but um, glycolysis is one of the early steps of cutting up lysis, the sugar or the glucose. So you start with glucose and you start to cut it up into, in order to release the energy that it's storing. And if we were to really zoom in on these pictures here, we'd see all of these things that, that end in ACE. As it turns out, those are all enzymes that help speed up those um, steps. And as it turns out, all of these enzymes we have in common. Um, you can pretty much look at any living species and they're gonna do this overall glycolysis path the same way. So again, a really surprising amount of similarity between all living species. So um, we just tried to give a very few um, examples about how all life is related, that we actually share a lot in common, especially when you look at uh, the cellular level. Um, and then we also made this prediction that the more closely related any two groups are, like these two right here, they should share more in common. And, and in fact, we're gonna try to learn how to build these tree models um, with evidence in our second unit.